Yeah, welcome back. This is Newsfile, it's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on Newsfile, we put Ghana first. It's brought to you by Bank of Africa, as strong as a group and close as a partner. MTN, everywhere you go. Ashasi University, educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for Africa. Duraplus, where Duraplus goes, water flows. Having mosquito spray and coil. Pleasant on humans, tough nightmare on insects. And Napa Foods, it is tasty. DBS Industries and Robert and Sons Limited Optical Services, your comprehensive eye care services provider. So what's going on in the NDC with Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa resigning from the appointments committee and assigning no reasons but everybody appears to seem to know the reason he resigns and the NDC decides to get into a crunch meeting as a leadership and I say Dunketia announces that leadership will change or it will not. Let's listen to Sidun Ketia. Then we come. I start with uh, Yabwabenga Samwa. I have Professor Ransford Jampu of the University of Ghana also joining us. And then we'll finish up with Inu Safuseni explaining what is going on in his party. It was a party decision. I see, but some of your members uh, in the in parliament, mm -hmm. uh, I have said about the decision. In fact, today, uh, Ablaka has resigned from being a member of the appointment committee. I don't know. How the party is taking that. I haven't heard about his resignation. I don't have any copy about his resignation. Have you received a letter? I, I'm unable to comment on letters I haven't read. So you know my style. Uh -huh. If I read a document and you want me to comment on it, I will do. But I will, I will be surprised if it is coming out of Kenoforata's approval. It shouldn't be coming out of Kenoforata's approval. Because we do understand that they demanded some further information from Ken, so the approval they offered was conditional. If he's able to provide it, then they can approve him. Ken didn't do that, and so they decided not to, 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 to approve him. But unfortunately... I am saying the that there was a party decision that let President Akufuado have his finance minister, and that has been achieved. So well, what is all this about details about who agreed or who didn't agree? The point is that this was a party decision. It has been implemented, and that's all. That, that's the end of the story. Have you ever seen me retract my words publicly? Hardly. You know why? Uh, there is a hadith of the prophet I have always used to guide me. I don't comment on doubtful matters. I comment on what I know. You know, the hadith of the prophet said that the forbidden is known, the unforbidden is known. Between them are doubtful matters. Avoid doubtful matters. You see, you are questioning me about doubtful matters. I'm keeping away from them because they are doubtful matters. But time and truth. You've heard my famous quote, quote God cannot be for and against the same matter at the same time. God has choices and God makes choices. Time will make choices. As for undermine, I have survived it. I will survive it. So, yeah, what do you understand is what is going on in the NDC in Parliament? I think there's a major power struggle going on within the NDC as a whole, not just in Parliament. Their party rank and file so disappointed in them. Because that leadership vacuum that they are fighting for, the previous leadership did not deal candidly with the followers. Well, they wanted to sustain themselves in leadership and they chose the wrong approach. Before I go on that tangent, let me crave your indulgence. My colleague Habib Adams, who is the secretary to the ESRP, the Energy Sector Recovery Program Implementation Committee, has sent me two pieces of information. Let me just share it quickly. It's very important. One, the doomsort debate. You have Fosu Ampofo saying something that if NDC had been retained in power, they would have ended Dumso. So he's brought that reference, and I'll send you the link. Then the second one, which is more important to me, is that he tells us that government has paid off all MDA bills in excess of 500 million since 2012. 
MDA bills to ECG. I think these are two very important pieces. So Habib, thank you very much for, for those. Uh, I couldn't recall of Osuan Pofu that quickly, but I know for a fact. I'm not interested in to, the politics. Let's go, let's go to politics. Yeah. Let's go to politics. Mm. Let's go to politics. So you have a situation where clearly there's a major power vacuum in the NDC that is being filled now. You had Rawlings and Mahama leading the party at some point, mm. with the conservatives following uh, Rawlings and the others, the new groups following Mahama. Now Rawlings is no more. Who steps into that gap? And then your mama has failed twice at elections. So is he ready to be pushed out? Now, a big factor in all of that is the parliamentary group. Now let us be clear. This power struggle does not mean that the NDC is going to die. The inherent structures of the 1992 constitution will not even allow that. Multi-party choices, the opportunity to grow and all that. But it is a necessary process for a renewal or rebirth of the NDC itself. Except that the way it's being conducted is so brutal. So you have a situation where the parliamentary party appears to be disrespected by the national leadership. And the national leadership seems to be imposing on the parliamentary party so that they are able to go in there and say that they will change the leadership based on decisions the parliamentary group have been making in conducting their business, that they are dissatisfied and they want to appease the foot soldiers by attacking the current leadership. And then the leadership says that we are in charge. And indeed, we have been confirmed. Uh, uh, contrary to what Esi Edun Katia is saying, I don't know if you've heard uh, my colleague, my former colleague, uh, Abiy Fuseni, uh, who proposed to speak on behalf of the minority, that the process of confirming the leadership has happened, and it won't happen again. It has already been done. Contrary to what Esi Edun Katia's assertions that they stalled because of the, uh, uh, the court case and all that. So you can see that the opening salvos have been done already. And that was, part of it was the Supreme Court exit strategy. After which, Jomah Meskam fired at Abin Ab Ab and Haruna. That they hadn't conducted themselves well by approving the ministerialist uh, to turn the fire on them. But now look at Babin. Is he in a good position to take over Rollins' space? Because don't forget, Babin has been a moderate kidder all along. He was there from the beginning. He's been in there all along. And therefore, if he's in a position of power and authority now, the kidders will back him. Two, is Haruna strong enough to withstand the attack? And the resignation is part of that attack. I, 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 I was trying to find out to do a bit of mischief. If an MP had the, the right to resign, from a committee because you've been sent there. The orders have duties for you to perform. But the standing order just says that you have to belong to a minimum of one committee. So I can't base myself to, to deal with that resignation. But there would, not be, there would not be even common sense to mm -hmm. say that one appointed to a committee doesn't have the right, right to, to resign. Move on. So, but the question is the replacement processes and the, what it imposes on that caucus, yes. But that's why I'm saying that. I went to the standing orders. Mm. I didn't find any mischief I could, but... So it's a legitimate shot in seeking to dislodge Haruna. Question, can that succeed? I don't think it will succeed. It will not succeed because I believe the speaker's side will rally to the support of the incumbent leadership. And I also believe that the leadership have an inherent strength at the moment in Parliament. That would be difficult for a I don't to... understand. You know, a strategic shot mm. at Haruna over what? The leadership. They want to get rid of that leadership. It's a power struggle. And to get rid of the leadership, mm. your members must resign. One member must resign from a committee to say what? It's a signal. It's of, a signal of, of a vote this of no this confidence. Affect, yes, it's a signal to show that you are no more in charge. You are not leading us. That's why Haruna had to come and say, I am still in charge. Because if Haruna leads them to do something, and then some members, and those members were part of the decision, come out and say, no, for some reason, I have resigned. And it's so contiguous that you know that it's because of that. Then, then it's a clear signal. 
Can't that, we say that Okujeto is independent minded um, to a large extent, irrespective of the whip system in parliament? We remember how at the start of your regime, Muntaka, you know, brought the issue of the bribery. Okujeto had issues. And you could tell that, you know, he would go his way even if it will hurt the group. You see, at this time, at this time, the NDC is in such a state that any individual taking any action will be taking it in pursuit of a group agenda within the NDC. It is clear. There are groups within the NDC, and there's a leadership vacuum. In all of this, where is the chairman? The Council of Elders is pussyfooting around, being neutral and all that. I see doing Katia starts to announce decisions in Parliament, outside Parliament. He's operating as a second speaker. Does that mean that Parliament is going to be teleguided from party headquarters in public? You understand what I'm saying? So at this time, there are movements in the nature of the control of the NDC. And those movements are coming from disparate groups within the NDC. Mm. And, and nobody in that system can be acting independently and alone at this Pro time. Professor, Professor Ransford Jampo of the Department of Political Science, University of Ghana, uh, thank you very much. What's your reading of what is happening within the NDC in Parliament? Some say that Okujeto clearly is giving a signal that he supports the masses of the party who have shown over a period now that they are so disappointed in their MPs for the manner in which they have gone ahead to endorse some of the nominees of the president. And that's clearly what he's doing. There are even speculations that some more of the members of this committee will also resign because um, they do a collective thing and then if they, do, they do something and everybody gets blamed. But some of them are quick to come to the public to say, I didn't vote for this person. I didn't approve that. Please, please unmute. Professor Jampo, please unmute. Sorry. Thank you, Samson. I think um, what is going on within the NDC is as a result of some form of leadership failure and betrayal um, on the part of um, their representatives in parliament. Um, we have, for the first time in the history of Ghana's Fourth Republic, had a hung parliament. Whether you like it or not, regardless of how you interpret it, it's 137, 137 plus one independent candidate. Um, since 1992, it's always happened that whoever wins the presidency gets a convincing majority in parliament. And so parliament becomes under the control of the executive arm of government. And so if you look at the new presidential system of government that we are now operating that combines the features of the parliamentary system and the presidential system together, that says that some members of parliament would have to also be appointed as ministers. It's happened said that um, a member of parliament who is also a minister is unable to critique um, um, whatever goes on on the floor of parliament, especially if it's coming from the executive arm of government to which he, he or she belongs. And a member of parliament who belongs to a ruling party and who has not benefited from ministerial appointment would want to also praise more because the more you praise, the more you better or you improve your chances of being um, elected or selected as a minister. Now, don't forget that at any time these things go on, you would always have the minority and the minority's influence within parliament has always been confined to the belief or the practice that they can always have their say, but they will always not have their way. And so, number one, the minority is cut into size. They cannot influence anything. The majority would always praise the government. So that the more you praise, the more you, uh, if you don't, if you're not, you don't have a ministry appointment, the more you praise, the more you improve your chances of being selected. And the one who be, is a minister and also a member of parliament is unable to critique 
and so they would always also praise. Now, because of that, Parliament um, from 1992 has always rubber stamped the decisions of the executive arm of government. I think Ghanaians were aware of this. That's how come they voted for the kind of parliament that we have today, a hung parliament. That now makes it mandatory for a parliament to assert its role as a countervailing authority to the powers of the executive arm of government. And by countervailing authority, we are simply saying that there must always be the existence of power that will counter the exercise of power so that the executive, executive president does not become a political king Kong like it's always been. Now, so we, a government um, is elected, a government nominates its ministers, and the ministers go to parliament um, to be vetted. Now, during the vetting, we had um, some of the people from the minority group coming out to say that, well, X, Y, Z uh, ministers are not going to be approved because we have We've been able to dig into them and we've been able to see that they don't have what it takes to serve as ministers and so we are not going to support them. Now they go to the floor of parliament and they go and overturn their, their earlier position and they, they fully um, lend their support. And they are unable to proffer any explanation to the people of Ghana. Fast forward to their unanimous approval of uh, Mr. Ken Furiata. I don't have Consens a problem with Mr. Consensus, Kenufu, consensus approval. You well, said unanimous approval. approval. It's consensus approval. Well, okay. Now, before then, I, like I said, I don't have a problem with Mr. Ken Oforiata. If you speak to him one on one, he, you, you realize that he means well. And um, he has his foot on the pedal. And also, um, the way he articulates his, his issues calmly and all that is such that is able to easily disarm um, uh, his opponents and all that. But that aside, so we, the, the minority before um, his vetting had made, uh, particularly those who pontificate on the issues of the economy and on finance, they, they had made all of us to believe that this was a very wicked, um, callous finance minister who had um, deliberately engineered the collapse of people's banks just for the purposes of protecting his own data bank. He had done so many things that had run down the public press and he's bringing a Japan deal. And they said so many, in fact, they hypnotized so many Ghanaians and into believing that Ken Oforiata was um, not a political saint at all. So they succeeded in demonizing this man. Now, you demonize the man and then you also insinuate or hint that because of that, you are not going to... Okay, so we need to give him the and then hello. Yes, you are on. You are on. Hello. You are on. For example, you are on. Yes, and then you go and um, yes. So you you go and give a consensus approval. And I'm told that it is only a dumbo and then later. Uh, say, Okuja Chua Blackwa has uh, resigned. Adungo came out to say, well, I didn't vote and all that. I have a lot of respect for Okuja Chua Blackwa for the decision he's taken because I'll tell you, Okuja Chua Blackwa, he was my student. And because of the relationship I, have, I had with him, or I have with him, I was able to get into him to find out, look, what is going on. And there were some of the things that he told me that we're not going to do X, Y, Z. And then they turn out to go and do the very things that they said they were not going to do without an explanation and all that. It creates an impression that uh, they are either involved in some form of unholy politics of convenience or um, um, something else that we are unable to put a finger on happened that they themselves are also unable or they don't want to explain, um, you know, happened to change their mind. And sometimes... If you don't take it, then you send people's minds to what some of them had previously alleged. You remember, at one point in time, one MP alleged that in the course of voting, they were some of them were compromised and they were given certain things that forced them to vote in a certain way. I, I'm not saying that this is what happened, but you cannot hypnotize all of us into thinking that look, Parliament now is now Parliament is now going to play its role 
as a countervailing authority to the executive is in it, power. Is and it not all possible? Of a sudden you get to uh, the floor of parliament. Is it, is and it then not you possible? Act in a manner that contradicts. Is it not possible? Is it is it not possible to see Okujeto's action as one of a principal decision, as one of a vote of no confidence in the committee and not the NDC leadership in parliament? Well, I've always argued that uh, it appears that our politicians have no principles and they have no conviction. And so they do anything that they please. But what Okujeto Ablakwa did, in my view, is a demonstration of somebody who believes in principles and somebody who has conviction. Because, like I said, I knew that he had a position that um, X, Y, Z should not be um, approved. But some way, somehow, I don't know whether it's because of the ACRIP system or whatever. Uh, you see, it, 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 it should be possible for us to have majority agreeing on a particular decision. But if you have a principle, if you, um, you're a man of conviction, you should be able to stand out and say that, look, um, let them all vote for why. But I want to be on record to have dissented. Samson, haven't you been part of a meeting where um, everybody was approving of a proposal, and then one person will say that I should be on record um, for having dissented. That person is simply telling you that, telling right. you that he has principles, he believes in conviction and all that. And so for me, I think, yes, he acted based on conviction and um, he acted based on the fact that he believes uh, in principle and we must commend him because um, it's not all uh, politicians who do this. And all right. those of them who all right. have Professor Janko, hold on for me. Uh, hold on for me. Let me bring in uh, Inus of Sene here. Honorable uh, Inus of Sene, are you with us? Hello? I am with you, yes. Great. What do you make of the interpretations that have been put on uh, Okujeto's uh, action? And why did it yes. have to, why did it have to, you know, bring about the party in parliament and out of parliament having to meet? And then Ese Dunketia telling all of us that the approval of the finance minister was a party decision and not as it were, that of the MPs, in, uh, the, the party's uh, group in parliament? Uh, Thompson, the, Thompson, there is no doubt that uh, what is happening presently in parliament within the NDC minority is a matter of serious concern. There's no doubt about that. There's also no doubt that the uh, appointment committee is threatened and the approval of the ministers attracted the air of the uh, uh, grassroots. There's no doubt about that. But you recall that I appeared on your program two, about four weeks ago, and I gave you my understanding and reading of the standing orders. My reading and understanding of the standing orders. You recall. Now, I have said that the, because we failed or neglected to inform the generality of our supporters on what could happen in Parliament. That probably accounts for the reason why we are here. And especially, like Professor Jempo has said, uh, this is the first time ever in the history of the Fourth Republic, or I dare say in the, even the history of Ghana, that we have had a Parliament that is evenly divided among or between the ruling party and the opposition. Uh, and the fact that on the seventh day of January 2021, the minority did what has never been done in the history of this country. They elected a speaker. So the expectations were high. And the grassroots reasonably and legitimate, legitimately were expected to have those expectations. Now, when those expectations were not met, that Clearly, what we are seeing clearly is the fallout of that expectation. It's not any betrayal. It's not, it, it's, it's not any crisis in leadership. It's the failure of the minority in parliament, the leadership of the party, to manage the expectation of the grassroots in understanding the parliamentary procedure and practice. 
That has got us to where we are. Let me say briefly on Abakwa, and I've heard you say, common sense say, if you are a member of the committee, you can resign. You don't become a member of your, the committee by election. You don't. You are appointed onto the member, onto a, a committee, a standing committee or a select committee. Does it matter? It matters. In the standing orders, wherever you have the right to resign, it is stated there. It is stated there in the standing order. That what? That where you have the right to resign, it's stated there. Where a person can resign. But if you take Eskimi, Eskimi is the authority on parliamentary practice and procedure. And it's written on the matter of all parliaments in Britain. When you are appointed onto a committee, you are, in, you are, you are put in charge of a committee. And until you are discharged, and there's a procedure for discharging you. There's a procedure. Sorry, when you, and you sorry, know, you know sorry. The rule of law. S sorry, in very simple important. language, are you saying that he doesn't reserve the right to resign? No, no, no. My Samson, oh, you're a lawyer. You're back. I'll find it here. Can you imagine the kind of disarray that will occasion if, if members of committees begin writing letters of resignation? Can you imagine that will happen? What will happen? I think it will be better for this democracy that people can exercise independent minds no, rather no, than no, the whip system. The, the whip it's, system. It's the the whip system that appears to render some of them as though you know no, they are zombies. The, law that the rule of law is as important to substantive law as it is to procedure. You know that. And so, and so, when you are put in charge of a committee, when you are a member of the committee. You are put as a member of the committee by the selection, the committee on selection. Oh. And the committee on selection can move a motion on the floor of the house to remove you from the committee. Honorable oh, Inusa oh, Fuseni, even the president can wake up, can wake up, can wake up, can wake up one morning, can wake up one morning and say, I don't want to be president. I'm not talking about the president, I'm talking about parliamentary procedure. And I'm telling you at the very top that it doesn't make even common sense to suggest that because, because there's a procedure, because there's a procedure to put you into a committee, you do not have, you do not have the liberty to determine at any point that you are not interested. I don't intend to argue with you on this matter. I mean, I think that when you leave the program, you can just take, you can just take the mental practice and look at how to go onto a committee and how to leave the committee. You can just take it and look at it. I'm not, I don't intend to argue with you on this matter. And I'm not going on the route of common sense. I'm going on the route of parliamentary procedure. Now, so I believe that what is happening in the NDC, uh, as happened before in 2000 and and uh, 2000, the year 2000, uh, when the NDC lost the uh, presidential election and they were the minority in parliament, there was an avalanche of attacks on the, on the NDC, except that, that uh, the avalanche of attacks was external, was external to the NDC, was not internal. That offered the NDC an opportunity to regroup and to fight back. Now, the attacks appear to be from within, and that forces an invidious responsibility on the leadership of the party, the Council of Elders, the leadership of Parliament, to sit down, to look at what is happening within the party, and fashion out a strategy to get out of it. I have no doubt in my mind that this is a storm, and it will come. I have no doubt in my mind. And I believe, seriously, that NDC will become stronger uh, after it has emerged from this storm. There is no reason. There is no reason in the present circumstances to change the leadership of the party because if you do so, you entrench the division, you entrench the suspicions within the party. You, it, the conventional wisdom will dictate that when uh, a, a group is going through crisis, what you do is that you stabilize the group and then you can then look at the leadership. But you do not change the leadership within crisis. So it, there will be a time soon or later when the NDC 
will reconstitute its leadership in Parliament? Oh, I've, I've been in Parliament long enough to know that I met Bagbun as the uh, minority leader in Parliament. Uh, I, when NDC won, he was changed. Uh, Kumbo was brought. While NDC was still in power, uh, 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 Avoka was brought. And so I've, I've known that leadership changes do occur. Indeed, even before Bagbun acceded to and became the minority leader, it was Kobunaji who was the majority leader. And even before Kobunaji, it was J.K. Ousa Achampo who was the majority leader. And so party will always constitute the leadership of the minority. But I'm saying that in prevalent time, you don't change the leadership of the party. Are you equally as disappointed in this minority, in this minority almost majority, like the mass of the party? Because if you check with the mass of the party, they are very excited at what Okujeto has done because they, they don't seem to be able to do more than they are talking and they don't seem to have their people listening to them. Well, if, if Okuja, what Okuja has done is going to be the yardstick, then we will be in, in the crisis for a very long time. I uh, see. In matters of this nature, mm. you, uh, we require discipline within the minority and unity to be able to push through the agenda of the minority. Okay. Uh, because people are going to be pandering to the dictate, mm. and taking All right. action that that in your view will satisfy the grassroots then you might be, we might I can, be under, I can understand that you will have to be preaching peace uh, in this direction but i'm sorry we have run out of time uh, why be some 20 yes, seconds just two seconds yeah. the resignation mm. question is not that clear mm. because it doesn't say so in the standing orders i'm just a one-term member of parliament okay the only thing it says is that 153 says at least a membership of one committee mm -hmm. and then you go to the membership of the privileges committee which sometimes impacts members. And then it says that you have a right to recuse yourself mm -hmm. in the event it affects you or otherwise. But nowhere does it say that you can resign. So mm -hmm. there are issues about whether he has capacity. And the right to, to speak about should not actually be expressed in any law because it's law, whether expressed or but, not. But, but I was actually going to comment until Babin accepted it. Mm -hmm. So I deferred to Babin's wiser okay. parliamentary practice. Okay. Otherwise, I initially, I thought that he didn't have the right All to right. sign. Okay, so let's see in the coming days how the NDC uh, will navigate, will navigate uh, this uh, situation, and particularly from the perspective that Professor Ransford Jampo uh, shares with us on uh, this uh, program. Thank you very much. Uh, Yao Bwabing Asamwa is Director of Communications, the New Patriotic Party. Um, Inus Ofuseni is lawyer and member of the NDC. Professor Ransford Jampo, Department of Political Science, University of Ghana. And thank you to Dr. Patrick Abwaje, Kuma Abwaje, and Kwame Sapongesiedu uh, for helping us earlier, as well as Benjamin um, Bwache. Thank you all so very much. This has been News File. My name is Samson Ladi Anyanini. See you again next week with yet another edition. Have a good afternoon.